Thank you, Charles. Our next speaker is June Kim from Curient. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is June Kim, and it looks like I am uh, the only Asian <laughs> participating in CPTR conference. And actually, it's uh, you know, my pleasure having an opportunity to uh, give this presentation actually on second annual updates uh, to the uh, guests in CPTR conference. So before start, um, I will uh, give you a brief introduction of what Curient is. So Curient is um, a biotech company based in South Korea, and we operate as a virtual R&D company where we don't have um, internal, um, you know, the, the lab where we uh, use external uh, CROs or uh, CMOs to uh, bring our projects forward. And um, I'm a, a, a pharmacist, pharmacist uh, based on my training, and I joined uh, Curient about seven years ago. And before joining Curient, I was um, working in uh, LG, Life Sciences, um, participating in uh, new drug development. So um, uh, as far as I remember, um, uh, Kian uh, was uh, participating in last year's conference and he gave a good introduction on Q203 compound. So I will uh, briefly touch up, uh, on the, uh, some of the uh, uh, interesting points of Q203. So it has a, a mechanism of action uh, that is very novel, but uh, in some way very similar to bedaculin, uh, where it is um, inhibiting the energy metabolism of the tuberculosis. But uh, we are uh, inhibiting the complex three of the mitochondria, while the bedaculin is uh, inhibiting the last uh, com component. And uh, from the uh, very recent uh, 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 paper uh, from the Nature uh, Communications 2016, uh, uh, they uh, actually uh, have done very uh, excellent uh, research where they are showing uh, the possibility of a synergy uh, with the bedaculin and Q203, which I will talk uh, more uh, in, in the later slides. And uh, Q203 also has uh, another secondary uh, action uh, where it inhibits the five lipoxygenase, which is related to the uh, anti-inflammation, uh, basically uh, inhibiting the production of LTB4 uh, to uh, reduce the uh, inflammatory actions. So these two uh, mechanisms have been uh, well proved in uh, various uh, in vitro and in vivo models that uh, here uh, we are showing the uh, very nice dose-dependent uh, activity of the compound uh, in uh, a standard uh, four-week treatment animal model. And we have found that the maximum efficacious dose of this compound is around uh, 10 milligram per kg. And the anti-inflammation effect has been proved in an uh, exhibible model in, uh, in rat where you dose the compound uh, orally and take out the whole blood and uh, challenge it uh, with the ionophore and measure the production of LTB4. And you can see that uh, the, the, uh, the uh, rats treated with Q203 uh, is showing a decreased level of LTB4 production. And this has been uh, translated into our uh, four weeks uh, TB animal model where uh, the, uh, the the mice uh, treated with Q203 are showing the uh, decreased the number of granuloma uh, in histopathology. So um, in 2015, uh, we uh, successfully uh, completed the uh, um, uh, IND-enabling uh, preclinical studies. So uh, from the, this uh, package, we found out that the, uh, the compound is showing a long half-life in fasted condition. In fat condition, the half-life is even uh, getting longer, almost too similar to the uh, bedaculin case. And uh, we uh, found out that steady state is uh, established after 14 days of dosing. And this compound is well distributed to the uh, target of uh, organ um, in, from the mouse uh, mass balance study. 
And interestingly, uh, this compound has uh, very low signs of drug-drug interaction uh, from uh, various in vitro studies, uh, such as a CYP enzyme inhibition induction and um, um, PGP uh, inhibitor and substrate uh, assays and so on. So, um, you know, metabolism-wise, this is uh, not very interesting because it does not show many metabolites. Actually, there is no ma major metabolite uh, from the, uh, uh, the hepatocyte in vitro assays using uh, various different species, uh, almost more than 90% of the compound uh, is in parent form. So excretion, excretion uh, this compound is excreted through fishes, and we have uh, established uh, uh, no, oil, no oil up to uh, 28 days of dosing in both rodent and non-rodent. So the uh, SAT, phase one SAT study has been uh, successfully completed in the uh, U.S. Uh, so we, have see, we are uh, seeing the, those proportional increase of CMAX and AUC. And also, inter interestingly, we are seeing this um, uh, uh, food effect almost increasing the uh, absorption around the five-fold higher with the high-fat diet. And phase one uh, med study is ongoing, so there are uh, nothing uh, much to uh, give you an update, but uh, we designed to support a 14-day uh, EBA study, and uh, we are halfway through the uh, dose escalation phase. So um, the future plan for Q203, um, the EBA study uh, is planned to start in uh, by end of 2017, this year in uh, South Africa. And uh, the, we are also trying to uh, adapt, uh, focus on developing a dosing resume that is actually, um, that can be available to, uh, to actual patients rather than just showing the compound's activity in, um, um, with the uh, current standard background uh, resumes. Uh, in this way, so we are uh, planning to uh, have a uh, extended uh, dosing phase after standard 14-day EBA study uh, with the HRZ uh, backbone uh, and or plus uh, the innovative backbone, which would, could be a bedaculin or uh, even something else together with bedaculin. And um, uh, from the recent uh, published paper, uh, they have uh, given us very, um, you know, excellent uh, biological rationale that uh, bedaculin together with Q203 uh, can be uh, very synergistic, and uh, this is uh, hitting actually uh, different two compartments of the energy metabolism chain uh, in uh, mycobacterium. So uh, we think this is very um, uh, a reasonable approach, and we actually have done uh, in vitro whole blood assay and as well as in vivo four weeks mouse study to prove uh, the, uh, this, synergy, this synergy. And uh, we uh, found out that uh, Q203 and bedaculin is actually showing a good synergy in mouse model as well as in whole blood assay. So, um, so in this way, uh, we are trying to uh, develop the safety and efficacy profile in a very early stage of uh, a phase two trial as possible. So I'd like to thank, uh, especially for the PANAS, your consortium that uh, we are working together for this phase two study, uh, especially Norbert Heinrich and uh, Sarah and Michael from LMU. And this program is also funded by a Korean uh, drug development uh, funding program. And, um, all of these uh, animal model studies have been done in Institute Pasteur Korea, so I think this is end of my end of my slide. Thank you. That's very interesting. Thank you. Can you tell us anything about the development of uh, Q203 in the in Russia? So um, the Russian, uh, so we have uh, licensed this uh, compound to Russian uh, collaborator in back in I guess 2015 is, 
uh, if I'm correct. And uh, they are, have finished the phase one study in their uh, local site, and they are waiting uh, for the uh, MET study result from uh, our side, and then they will continue to develop uh, uh, later phase two studies by themselves. Just a uh, comment and a question. Uh, the data shows a huge uh, food effect, <clears throat> excuse me, and then also you said the excretion is primarily through the feces. So are you looking to optimize the formulation because otherwise you're going to end up with a lot of variability in the clinical trials? So this food effect uh, increasing about five-fold uh, higher uh, um, may become a problem in uh, MDR patients where uh, Especially, I um, uh, learned uh, pretty much about the patient's condition from a morning session that uh, patients are vomiting uh, frequently after uh, taking the uh, medicine. So, uh, if possible, uh, with, I think uh, it's um, important to uh, overcome this food effect by uh, developing, changing the formulation. Look at the product, the EBA of the product alone or in combination? So, the uh, first phase of uh, study will be uh, just a monotherapy phase, yeah. a 14 day EBA study. And then uh, we will uh, select one dose and then we'll uh, go to the second phase of do dosing uh, where we, com uh, we put the uh, combination with the uh, HRZ and uh, uh, bedaculin. In the same patients? In a different patients. I suspect in combination, all you'll see is the effect of isoniazid. You won't see anything else. Right, that's correct. So the, the focus is uh, to uh, observe the safety and PK profile of these uh, mixed compounds together. And I agree that uh, the efficacy-wise, uh, it will be very you know, difficult to distinguish the effect, additive or synergy effect, with a standard uh, dosing regimen. And uh, with the bedaculin, uh, this is first time trying uh, this uh, combination in humans, so uh, we are excited to see the result. 